On this channel, I like to talk about Belgium's aviation history. Although sometimes, it's nice to take a moment and look at the future. Under the STAR plan, a large-scale modernization plan for the Belgian Armed Forces, previously known as Strategic Vision or Horizon 2030, almost the entire Belgian Air Force fleet is to undergo a massive change before the end of this decade, with pretty much all legacy types of fixed-wing and helicopters being replaced by new and advanced aircraft. Today, we are going to look at the Belgian Air Force helicopter fleet. We will look into the fixed-wing assets on another date. At present, the Belgian Air Force has a fleet of about roughly 20 helicopters. These consist of 12 Augusta A109 BAIs, 4 NH90 NFH, and 4 NH90 TTH. All of them are organized within the first helicopter wing in Bovesheim and Coxede. However, the helicopter fleet has been dropping in numbers over the past years, but will be re-equipped, modernized, and enlarged under the STAR plan. The NH-90 Cayman was ordered in 2007. In total, the Belgian Air Force has eight of these helicopters in service, with the first four TTH versions being delivered in December 2012, and the first of four NFH versions in May 2014. The acquisition and selection of the NH-90 wasn't exactly gone smoothly, since the numbers planned had drastically declined since the early 2000s, when the requirement for a new medium helicopters was sent out. At first it was 22, but budget cuts over the years has scaled these numbers back to 16, then 10, and eventually 8. But just like with several other operators of the type, the NH-90 has not been so successful as it was hoped to be, and the Belgians are currently not satisfied with the type, at least with the TTH version. The four NH-90 TTHs in the Belgian Air Force known as the NH-90 MTH, or multi-role transport helicopter, operated by 18 Squadron, have been suffering from low availability due to a number of factors. First, support from industry has been poor to say the least, with spares and replacement parts encountering delays due to logistical problems and mismanagement by the Nahima office, with the result that the helicopters stay grounded and spend more time in maintenance than they are flying eventually leading to low availability for operational usage, especially for Special Forces training. Second, operational flying costs for the NH-90 TTHs are much higher than anticipated, especially with a budget-minded Belgian Air Force that has been underfunded for many years. And finally, with only four of the type in service, the numbers are too few to stay operationally relevant. Even though pilots love the NH-90, they too understand this problem. As quoted by one pilot, the NH-90 is a terrific helicopter with incredible performance. That is, when it actually flies, which is not always the case. In June 2020, it was announced that the Belgian Air Force has decided to withdraw the NH-90 TTH from service by 2024 and has put them up for sale. Along with the remaining Augusta A109s, they will be replaced with the new LUH or Light Utility Helicopter but more on that later. In comparison to the TTH variant, the four helicopters of the NFH variant, or NATO Frigate Helicopter, in service with 40 Squadron based at Coxede, have been quite successful. That is mostly because they have the important task of search and rescue of the North Sea. In this mission, they have replaced the old five Westland Seeking Mark 48s, of which the last was retired in 2019. Also, because of this, most spares parts earmarked for the TTH variants were redirected and prioritized to the NFH versions. The fleet has recently surpassed the milestone of 5,000 flying hours and currently enjoys being the world fleet leader of the type in terms of availability. But search and rescue is not the only job for the NH-90 NFH. They also perform maritime security missions and support operations from Belgian Navy and Netherlands Navy ships. In this task, they replaced the three old Aerospatial Alouette Freeze, which were retired in 2021 after 50 years of service. As part of the STAR plan, the NH-90 NFH portfolio is about to expand, as by 2025, the helicopters will also gain an anti-submarine warfare role, in which the helicopters will be modified to carry anti-sub equipment 
sonar and torpedo armament. But with only four helicopters of the type in service, the numbers are too few to perform both SAR, maritime operations and anti-submarine warfare missions. That is why, in 2022, it was decided that the NH-90 NFH will be relieved from the SAR role and as of 2025, to put its focus on the military maritime operations and anti-submarine warfare missions. Also in 2025, the fleet will move to new facilities at Ostend International Airport as Coxeda Air Base is about to close down. But the search and rescue mission will still be performed by the Belgian Air Force. Which brings us to the first part of the fleet modernization. As the NH-90 NFH will lose the SAR task, it has recently been decided to buy four brand new helicopters in the short term instead of buying additional NH-90s due to the aforementioned high costs. But the new helicopter will not only have a priority SAR mission, but is also expected to function as a lead-in training platform for maritime crews that will go on to fly the NH-90 NFH. A budget of 181 million euros has been made available to buy these helicopters, all to be delivered between 2025 and 2027. Although no specific type has been mentioned, it is likely the helicopter would need to have some similarity with the NH-90 in both performance and operations. It is likely to be an aircraft somewhere in the 7 ton class as it needs to be acquired in the short term it has to be bought off the shelf. Although it has not been specified if this will be a civilian or military standard helicopter. One of the most likely candidates is the Airbus H175, a type that has a lot of commonality with the NH-90 and is already in service in Belgium with the Ostende-based operator NHV, which was also the launch customer and the first to take delivery of the type. This also gives the H-175 an advantage, as the new helicopters will also be based in Ostende, maintenance and repairs can be outsourced to NHV, increasing availability, reducing operational costs and have spare parts available on site. There is also a military version, the H-175M, which has recently been revealed by Airbus and is currently being offered to the British Royal Air Force as a possible replacement for its old Puma helicopters. Sharing many similarities and components with the civilian model, this aircraft could also be a potential candidate. Another likely candidate is Leonardo's, previously known as Augusta Westland, AW149, a military variant of the AW189, which is in service with various civilian operators in Europe for offshore operations and Coast Guard duties. The AW149 is also in the running to replace the RES Puma and the type has recently been ordered by Poland and is currently in military service with Egypt and Thailand. Although not ordered in large numbers like its civilian brother, the AW189, it does inherit its performance and parts commonality and spares are also readily available. The helicopter has also proven itself to be a potent SAR helicopter serving with various Coast Guard and rescue operators in Europe. However, Belgium and Leonardo have a troubled past. Back in the early 90s, Leonardo, back then still known as Augusta, was involved in a bribery scandal in a deal for the Augusta A109, a scandal that caused the Belgian government to collapse and the memories is still vivid today. That might influence the selection of the type, I might do a separate video on the Augusta Dassault scandal in the future. Although the Bell 525 Relentless could also be a possible candidate, the helicopter at this time is still undergoing development and is only flying in the prototype stage and is unlikely to be in production or certified for flying in Europe in the required time frame. Although an older design compared with the H-175 and AW-149, the Airbus H-225 Super Puma is perhaps one of the most utilized helicopters in the SAR role in Europe at this moment, even though its design dates back to the 1960s with the SA-330 Puma which was also in service with the Belgian Rijkswacht Gendarmerie, which is now part of the Federal Police. This version is a larger, more powerful and far more technologically evolved version of the old Puma, that still is being produced today. In its current form, the H-225 Super Puma and the military H-225M, also known as the Caracal, is also serving with various civilian and military operators around the world as a search and rescue helicopter and has proven its worth for many years. 
Although similar in size and class to the NH-90, this helicopter offers a much higher cabin ceiling, which offers a more comfortable work environment for the cabin crews, not to mention lower operating costs. Although the type might be considered too large and heavy for the lead in maritime training role. Although the Belgian Air Force has not specified what helicopter types are being considered to take over the NH-90 and FH SAR duties, these are believed to be the strongest possible options in my own opinion. This is of course purely speculative and it is too early to say at this moment who the real contenders for the requirement will be. With the announcement of the early retirement of the NH-90 TTH, it has been decided to replace these along with the remaining Augusta A109 helicopters which has been in service since 1992. As part of the star plan, both helicopters will be replaced by a single type of light utility helicopter. These will have the ability to perform transport and medevac missions, act as an armed support and escort helicopter and as a platform for special forces missions. 15 of these helicopters are expected to be ordered very soon. At this moment, that appears to be a pretty much a done deal. As it has been noted multiple times in the press and in military circles, that the preferred platform for this requirement is the Airbus Helicopters H145M. This helicopter is currently in military service with various other EU and NATO members, including Albanian, Hungarian, Germany, Serbia, the UK and Luxembourg. The type has also recently been ordered by Cyprus. What makes the H145 so good is its versatility, high performance, high rate of availability and low unit and operating costs. It also shares commonality with its civilian version, the H145, which is in service with Belgium based operator NHV, who also uses the type for EMS duties in the balloon regions. The company also performs maintenance and repairs for Germany's H145M fleet so extensive maintenance and repairs can be outsourced, leading to further cost reductions. The introduction of the H145M in Belgian service could also possibly revive the helicopter anti-tank capability, a role originally intended and performed by the Augusta A109, but has quietly been dropped in the early year 2000, as the helicopter turned out to be too underpowered when fully armed with eight tow missiles. The main anti-tank weapon for the H145M is the Spike ER, a weapon that is already in use with the Belgian Army as a shoulder carried weapon, but could also be acquired and modified to be air launched. Additional H145M could also be acquired in the future, as the Belgian police is also considering the type to replace the MD520 and MD900 helicopters, and jointly operate the type with the Belgian Air Force, but this is purely speculation at this moment. The H2H requirement, which stands for Heavy Transport Helicopter, is a new capability that will be introduced in the Belgian Air Force before the end of the decade. This helicopter needs to be able to lift a whole platoon of commandos or special forces operators in a single lift, and has also has to be integrated in a pool of other international operators in Europe. It also needs to fulfill a secondary duties such as disaster relief, firefighting and support of civilian relief operations. The most likely type to be selected is the Boeing CH-47F Chinook. In June 2022, Boeing spokesman Mike Spencer has noted that Belgium has requested pricing information on the type. The Chinook for Belgium would make sense, as not only is this helicopter extremely powerful, capable and cost effective, it also is the only helicopter in its class that meets the requirements. The aircraft can also be operated in a joint venture cooperation with the Netherlands Air Force, who also bought the CH-47F to replace their older D models, and has over 25 years of experience with the type. They are already doing a similar cooperation with Germany, who has recently placed an order for 60 of these Chinook helicopters to replace the outdated Vietnam-era Sikorsky CH-53Gs. Other European Chinook operators, such as Spain, the UK, Italy, Greece and Turkey are all replacing their older model Chinooks with the newer F model, as the only helicopter that can replace the Chinook is another Chinook. The Belgian Air Force is expected to order between 8 or 10 of these tandem rotor heavy lift helicopter transports. And that pretty much sums up the future of the Belgian Air Force, its rotary wing assets. Of course, 
like all military acquisition plans, these are subject to change. In a future video, we will look at what the future holds for the Belgian Air Force's fixed-wing assets.